Welcome back to the second tutorial for the inventories. My name is Stefan. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's, uh, we've got 10 minutes. Let's open our items class. And let's add one more so it's ready. It'll be a texture 2D. We'll name this one item icon. Maybe we get some visuals later without a bunch of editing. Save it. And that would be my Steam. And here, let's go ahead, let's create a private int. We'll do max inventory. Okay. Inside our GUI, let's create another int. Let's do empty slot. Sorry about that. Okay. And then above our label, let's put it inside an if statement. And we will do if empty slot is less than max inventory. Then we will create our labels. Let's go ahead and close that off. Let's make our empty slot equal to zero. And inside our start, let's make max inventory equal rows times columns. That way, no matter how many rows and columns we have in our inventory being shown, our max inventory will equal that amount. That way there's not a bunch of crazy stuff going on. I've seen people do weird math just to make it do something that simple. Let's go through. Let's go ahead and get new out of here. Let's make it look like a box because this will actually be our background labels to show where our empty slots are. And we will also... Let's see, let's create a button offset here. Let's see how this looks really quick. Make sure it renders out the amount that we need. Okay, let's make sure your scene is loaded if you've saved last time. Okay, there they are. That's exactly how it was before, but as you can see, we took off new. So it's the new script. Okay, let's go in, let's create a private int. Later on we will clean this up so it's not so many lines of same thing, all these ints. Okay, we will name this one button offset. Okay, and inside here, let's go ahead and get rid of the 10. We're going to actually use button offset. Plus. I'll leave that. Okay, and then x times, and then in here, we're going to do the 50 plus our button offset and close that off. Okay, let's go ahead and do that in the Y. Okay, so we will do button offset plus close that off there plus the button offset. Alright. Let's go ahead and save. Test it out did not offset. Let's see what we have in here. 50 plus button offset. X times. Let's take a look at this real quick so we don't hog up some time. Alright, sorry about that. And uh, props to whoever caught that. We forgot to say how much button offset was. We'll make it 5. Uh, save it. Hit play, and there we go. Now it's all offset. Nothing, everything's not all scrunched up together. If you do want to scrunch up together, I don't recommend it, but just don't add it. It's that easy. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's create our window. We're doing a draggable window on this one, so let's do a private rect. We'll do inventory window. Okay. This will equal. A We'll do this different later, but for now, for time's sake, and let's make it 25 left, 25 from the top, and let's make it 200 wide and 250 tall. That's probably too much, but it's a good way to start. I'd rather do more than less. 
Okay, and then under our GUI here, let's go ahead and create a void. And this one will be inventory window. Okay, and here you need to put int window ID. Okay, and then we're going to move our GUI. Oh, not the whole thing, just our inventory window stuff. Cut it and paste it there. Okay, and in our GUI we will do in window equals, and this will be a GUI window. Inside we will do, as it says here, we need a window ID, we need the rect, we need the window, the actual function, and then some text for the string. Okay, so in here we will do zero for the window ID, and then for the rect is inventory window, and then we do this one inventory window, and for a string we'll put inventory. Okay, close it off. So let's make sure this works here. Oh, what did we break? Parsing error. Love those. That's because my window here. Close that off. Apologize. I'm doing this in the 720. Wait, it's a little faster. Okay. Save. Should clear that. Hit play. Now we have it in our window. As you can see, it's not big enough, so we need it wider and don't need it so tall. So, and we also need to do Y longer, so we'll do Y for the button offset, we'll do button offset. We will times it by, let's say, let's do four. Okay, and then up here, let's make it wider. So let's make it wider by 50 and we'll see what 225 looks like on height. Just gotta play around with this a little bit. Okay, still not quite. Actually I think the height should have stayed because we moved it. And the width will go to let's see what 60. Okay, there I go. Moving shit. And play. Almost there. Okay. Uh -huh. This is the door. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, while I was gone, I went ahead and changed things. 280 wide, 240 tall, and that seems, for what we have set up here, seems to fit just nicely. Okay. Later we will make it to where it automatically fits perfectly, no matter what the size is. So let's go ahead and do our last thing here the bottom, GUI, drag window, and we will go ahead and do zero, zero, and this doesn't have to be huge, but it doesn't hurt. That's 10,000, and zero. Now I'll actually make this, make this 20. Okay, and that is, this is so that no matter how big it is, at resize, it'll still be draggable from when you click, and this is how much from the top you want to be able to drag from. Close that off. Save. And I broke it. Takes four arguments, huh? Drag window one, two, three, four. You know, for now, let's go ahead and make the whole thing be draggable. Save. Okay. And, as you see, you drag it here. You can click anywhere. We'll fix that later. But we are down to 30 seconds left, so I will see you in the third episode, and I hope this is helping you out.